What's up, YouTube? It's your girl Sheridan S. Davis, and I'm back, 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 back with yet another video. Today, we are reviewing Love and Mary Transville. Let's get to it. people is here i don't live by myself so y'all be all right all right y'all i'm so excited to get back to family love and marriage huntsville i feel like it's been such a long time uh since my last love and marriage huntsville review but it hasn't it was literally a week ago <laughs> but it feels like a big old gap um but i'm excited to talk about it i can already tell y'all that my opinions are unpopular um, the internet seems to be team King, team, team Kiki. And I think the reason why the internet is team Kiki is because everybody hates Marceau. And, um, but there are some inconsistencies with Kiki and I just, I don't dislike Kiki, but me disliking Marceau does not make me blind to some of the antics of Kiki. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. So this is my un un unpopular opinion of tonight's episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville. So Kiki comes in. Um, this is a continuation from last week. Kiki comes in and it doesn't look like everybody else is too thrilled to see her either. Like everybody knew it was going to be some mess when Kiki came in. So... Kiki comes in and Tisha is and Kiki are playing nice, you know. Oh hi, how are you? You look pretty, you too. Mm -hmm. Child, they don't like each other, okay? So um, they're complimenting each other, talking to each other, and I'm just sitting up here on the couch watching the TV, like I'm just waiting on the clownery to start. When does the clownery begin? And it doesn't take long, child. The first six minutes, really the first. Six to ten minutes of this episode should have been the entire episode. Besma, as they call it, <laughs> Alabama, gets it cracking. Um, Tisha and Kiki family are just, yeah. Um, so Kiki says, mm, I called you this week. They're doing this nice, nasty Southern Belle voice, and it's cracking me up. So Kiki says, I called you this week, and Tisha's like, oh, really? You called me? I didn't get a call. I, I didn't receive a call from you. And Kiki basically tell her, yes, you did. <laughs> and Tisha's like, girl, how you know I saw a call? Because I called you. Girl, this is not the era of the 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 landline. This the digital phone. You got that call? I wish. I believe um kiki that tisha got the call and she ain't answer and i understand why tisha would not answer her cousin's call i wish tisha would have just kept it a book and um just been like girl i want to answer you know we ain't talking but tisha does admit and y'all gotta excuse me if i'm looking down y'all know i'm looking at notes tisha admits that you know girl you know i ain't talking to you anyway so and you made it that way basically by talking to melody about her and Kiki starts getting booked immediately. And I'm confused at Kiki's confusion. Like, okay, girl, you were at the sleepover. You were involved in conversation about Tisha. You are aware that Tisha knows about this. Why are you surprised that she's heard that you were involved in conversation about her? Whether it was truth or not truth. Why are you surprised at that? Why are you like, oh, really? You ain't want to talk to me? Girl, no. No. So, anyway, um, they uh, Kiki starts getting book and saying to Tisha, saying, you allowed your husband to tell my business. And I was like, so your issue is not with Tisha. It's with Marso. Somebody help me make it make sense. Make it make sense. To me, this is disingenuous because the whole Kiki issue with Tisha and Marceau is disingenuous. This happened five years ago. Y'all, quote unquote, moved on. 
you're telling us now i have seen the lives that um kiki has done you're telling us that you and tisha were supposed to come into the seasons together and that tisha somehow crossed you where did it happen there's a piece of this puzzle missing where did she cross you where does she upset you it looks like you crossed her not the other way around so kiki do you love me? It's not looking. It's not looking. I, I don't like it. So their issue have five happened five years ago. Y'all moved on. So why is it being brought up on this show? Is it that you're bringing up because you want camera time? Like, is it for the storyline? And why do you have the smoke for Tisha if the issue is Marceau? If he's the one who told it, I'm, I need clarity. So Tisha feels like Kiki is trying to get back at her. Tells the family that Kiki is trying to get back at her. And that makes sense because why else are y'all talking about something that happened five to eight years ago? And y'all don't even know if it was five years, eight years, or ten years. But anyway, Tisha walks off. As she is sipping her water, baby. Tisha, that's why Tisha's skin looks good. Tisha, I don't care what y'all say about that woman. That woman has drank 15 bottles of water on tonight's episode alone. Okay? I say you better drink that great value water. So, Tisha walks off and leaves them folks at the table. And Kiki says to her, you told your husband stuff I didn't tell you to tell him. Um. Okay, quick question. This is just for y'all who have married friends, single friends who have married friends. Um, do y'all think that when y'all tell a married friend something that they don't tell their spouse, do you expect them not to tell their spouse? Or do you assume that they're going to tell their spouse? Because I know way too many couples that they, they pillow talking about your business. So I wonder, like, it, is it a deal breaker as far as friendship if your friend tells their spouse y'all business? Let me know. Comment down below. So anyway, um, again, when she says this, this is further lets me know that her issue is not with Tisha. It's with Marceau. So Kiki says... Um, she doesn't go back and repeat their conversations with her husband. Well, we don't know if that's true or not, but that's what she says. Um, so when Tisha hears this, I think she hears the word husband and decides to come back around. And so Tisha come back to the table and says, because you lied about it, because you lied about it. And Kiki calls BS. And I was like, oh, they is cussing, cussing. So Marceau is steaming this whole time. Now, I'm seeing people on the internet talking about how Marceau was calm the whole episode except when Kiki got to talking. That is not true. First of all, he was vulgar last week's episode telling them to do a sniff test. Talking crap to Bernard. He talked crap to Bernard this episode and you literally see Marceau like this. Pot boiling. I think he snapped at Kiki because A, they have helped Kiki B, um, Kiki is acting like she was going to out him. And C, maybe she does have some information. Who's to say? Probably not, but who's to say, okay? So he's steaming the whole time, and he looked like he just want to toss the table like Jesus did at the temple. And I was like, ooh, baby, somebody, where's security? Bring in security. Go get Marceau. So Marceau says, I'm the one that said the business. Be, uh, but just because it's your business means it's, uh, doesn't mean it's not personal or doesn't mean it's personal business. Huh? I need to know what happened. I, I need to know what happened. Was Kiki on the crack cocaine or not? Because that's what it's giving. It, was she on the crack cocaine? Was she stealing babies out of the mother's arms? Did she kidnap somebody? What is going on? I need y'all to tell us what is it? So, Bernard, who I'm so tired of him, Bernard says Marceau is a mess starter underneath his breath, and Marceau hears him. How Marceau start the mess? Okay. Marceau hears him and tells him to shut the F up. And I was like, oh. Oh. Now, that's a wild thing to say to your in-laws, but I also understand, and I don't blame him. And I just feel like Marceau 
seeing Marceau deal with Tisha's family lets me know that he actually does love her. Because y'all know sometimes Marceau is just such a butt that you can't even tell if he loved this girl or yet alone like her. But I think he does love her because no one in their right mind will be around folks who they cannot stand if they didn't love their spouse. Because I know I wouldn't have been there. Tisha would have had to go on by herself to deal with her mama. Um, ain't no way. So one of the cousins, I think it was Kiki's sister, asked, why is it reoccurring if y'all settled it? And Kiki's response was, because every time we settle it, she does something to stir it back up. And me and Tisha are shocked. Tisha was like, me? And I was like, Tisha? Because what did she do? If y'all could just tell us what Tisha did to start, start Kiki on her way, maybe y'all would feel better about it. But I am not understanding what Tisha did. All we see is what Kiki did. So I'm confusion. I need y'all to be clear with us. But Kiki tells, um, Kiki and Tisha starts arguing back and forth. And Kiki says, we haven't been friends for eight years. And Tisha says, thank you. Thank you for going behind my back and telling my business. And Kiki points in her face like, and I would have bit her finger off. I'm sorry. Get that hand out my face. Anyways, um, Kiki points at her face and said, Thank you for telling your husband my BS. Not your BS. Good. Okay. So Kiki still cannot articulate for us how Tisha has stabbed her in the back. Not even just the eight years ago thing, but what has she done to you lately? Because somebody just tell us. Um, all she does is talk about what happened five years ago. So they're about to go to blows literally. And um, I got money on Tisha because Kiki, it just don't look like she could fight. I'm sorry. Um, T-Man come over trying to break them up. And Tisha yells at, um, Tisha yells and says, I have never done anything to be disloyal to you. And Kiki says, <laughs> oh, God. Kiki just being messy. Kiki like, yes, you did. Marso says, you're doing it right now, which was true. You are being disloyal because you kind of telling millions of viewers about what's going on. So, yeah. And so, T uh, Kiki tells him to shut the heck up and says he's full of it. And I just, you can't talk to my husband like that. I, I, I don't know. I'm just mad at my business. So, Miss Wanda comes over. And she acts like an adult for once. And she tells everybody to shut up. And she's basically upset that Kiki came in on 10. Apparently, she came in hot. And she tells them, if you can't talk one civilized person at a time, then she going to shut the whole thing down. And honestly, I know that's right, Miss Wanda. That's the best thing Miss Wanda has said since season one, episode one of this show. So Kiki says, if I told the most personal information about you, and Marceau cuts her off and says, the whole city of Huntsville saw you. Y'all, just tell us this girl was on crack. I mean, allegedly. I'm alleging it. But just tell us the girl was on crack because that's what it's giving. Y'all know this lady, like, is in education. So I feel like that's what it is. She's on crack, was on crack, was homeless, prostituting, something like that. It's giving a Judge Mathis crackhead accusation. That's what it feels like. So Jennifer, who is Kiki's sister, says, Marceau is causing more friction between them. And I'm like, girl, no, he's not because Tisha doesn't disagree with him. She was like, she's not going to go against you because you're her husband. No, she, in this instance, she's not going to go against him because she agrees with him. They're on the same team. Listen, y'all thought Melody and Martell was on the same team? And now uh, Tisha and Marceau are on the same team. I'm going to tell y'all once. I'm going to tell you twice. I think Marceau cheated in the past. I don't think he's currently cheating. But I definitely think he cheated in the past. I, I thoroughly believe that Tisha is aware of his cheating in the past and they have decided to move forward. Because they have decided to move forward, they are not, she's turning a blind eye. Not a blind eye as if he's still doing it, but she's not going to keep bringing it up because they're moving forward. That's genuinely what I think because nobody... Not a soul has been able to come out with real cold hard evidence 
that Marceau is cheating on Tisha. Yes, I know that they said he was um, cheating on her with some scientist chick, and she was in Atlanta the same day Marceau was in Atlanta. She knows them. That does not mean she is cheating. So, like, y'all don't have no evidence. Y'all want this man to be cheating so bad. Maybe he is, but there is no concrete evidence of such. He has not admitted it. She has not admitted it. Tisha has not admitted it. So, just, like, y'all want it to be facts so bad, and it's not facts yet. It's not proven. So, um... Marceau has been quiet most of the time until Kiki basically addressed him. She brought him out. So Tisha says, Kiki is the cause of all the friction. She is telling folks, I told her that Marceau cheated on me and that's a lie. Kiki said, you better think. I mean, girl, she just almost called her the B word. And Tisha said, I told you Marceau cheated on me. I told you Marceau cheated on me. And Kiki said, I never said that, but I will bring it out if I have to. Huh? I think that's what I think that's what you were saying, Kiki. I Okay, let's just keep going. Cause Kiki is frustrating me. So I'm just like, bring it out. I was saying the same thing Marcel was saying. Marcel said, do it. Do whatever you want to do. And I promise you I will burn this MF down to the ground. And I was like, oh, Marcel's getting ignited. Now, Marcel, when you act like that, it do look like you might be a little bit guilty. But also, it could be, you know, people say that all the time. But it could be literally when you are accused of something you know you did not do, you can react like that as well. It's people on the internet thinking they body language experts for me. Like, y'all psychotherapists. Anyway. So, Kiki's country husband tries to defend her about telling Marceau, put it out there. If that's what type of dude you is. Huh? He's defending himself by saying, if you put my stuff out there, I'm going to put your stuff out there. It's not about what type of dude he is. Okay? But anyway, uh, Marceau says... It was brought to them maliciously with the intent to do exactly what they're doing now. And I believe him because we have seen Marceau, excuse me, uh, Martel, so many Mars, Martel and Melody start fires. Like when they did in season two by calling um, Kimmy a side chick. Um, The whole 21 girlfriends comments. It's just, they start fires, both of them. It's not just Martel, uh, but especially when they were together. So Tisha says that she and Marcel have been there for Kiki and her family, a.k.a. when they was broke, they helped them out. <laughs> so Kiki um, came to Tisha and she says, um, or Tisha tells us that Kiki came to her and told her, watch out for the hoax because they, I think they're trying to destroy your marriage. And I believe it because Kiki, the same person who uh, called out, Kimmy for not lying for Tisha. So I I just don't know. Bernard comes up behind Marceau talking about some I'm glad you talked to him and Marceau cussed him out and called him annoying and I like Marceau is tired of Bernard and his bleached hair follicles. Sick of him. Sick of him. Tisha is screaming and crying about her hurt she is and so Kiki says uh, have we not talked about cheating spouses? Kiki trying to keep clear her name, baby. She trying to let you know she's not a liar. And Tisha says, girl, yeah, duh. And Kiki's like, exactly. No, that's not the same thing as she was telling you that her man was cheating. That's what you alluded to, Kiki. Let's stop. Stop. Oh, God, I'm sick of Kiki. And her AliExpress jewelry. I'm sick of her with her yakky 1B uh, braid hair for a ponytail. I'm sick of Kiki. Get her off my screen. And I liked her before. I was trying to like Kiki, but I can't do it. Marceau reiterates that Melody told her that it's out of spice so that Kiki could react. And Miss Wanda comes to shut them down and acts like an adult for once. And basically telling them everybody shut up and eat the food. But the food good. Everybody like, yeah, it was good. <laughs> so then next thing we see Kiki, um, Kiki. K- 
Kimmy, who is pretty in pink. She has on a really cute blush color uh, as she goes to see Destiny. Kimmy wants to know how Destiny feels about Stormy. And I'm like, I don't care about Stormy or how Destiny feels about her. Anyway, so Destiny tells her that she did like Stormy and Stormy had invited her and her father over to fish at their house and they were forming a friendship and Destiny wants to know where she went wrong with the whole debacle and Kimmy wants to start at Sweetheart and I'm confusing because Sweetheart was not the beginning of the fallout. They were, Stormy came in high and the issue is that Stormy is asking her questions about Melody. Stormy has elected herself as Melody's pit bull and that is annoying to Destiny. That's really what it is so destiny has been going through a lot she started a business she got married had a baby had a divorce went through a pandemic closed the business semi-closed the business uh losing a friend and it's a whole lot but guess what destiny because your name is not melody sheree rogers hope rogers again you don't get sympathy on this show because sympathy is reserved and grace is reserved for melody so, um, <laughs> next we see sympathy, sympathy. Tiffany surprised her husband, Louis, and I could not possibly care less about her surprising him. Um, Tiffany is out of her mind. She goes to Utah with Melody instead of her husband, who has been complaining about not spending time with her. She then takes a trip to find her father, a long trip with Melody instead of with her husband. She could have brought him along, like brought Mel with her. But did she do that? No. And then she's upset that he did not ask her how the trip was. Well, Tiffany, maybe, maybe he didn't ask you because you keep trying to distance yourself from him. So perhaps he thought you would lead with what had happened. But whatever, who am I? Who are me? Uh, I'm moving on. I don't care about what else they talked about. So anyway, Martel and his tight suit with the um, with the uh, um, with the dress shirt that was buttoned um that was unbuttoned down to his belly button. He meets with his um manager just to tell us that he's inviting the guys to the guy strip. We already knew that Martel. My question is, where's Sadarik? How come Sadarik don't get invited nowhere no more? That's my, that's the real question. Um, so now we see Tisha and Marcel go for coffee, and I think that's a cute little date. I don't, I want to go to coffee with somebody's son, really tea, but I want to do that with somebody's son. But anyway, Marcel says he's only willing to think about investing in Wanda's food truck if they bring him an operable truck, duh, and an actual business plan. So uh, the they reevaluate the um, argument that happened between them and Kiki and rehash the same things. Um, and Marcel basically lets us know that he got out of character because Kiki was acting like she had something on him that she does not have. And I was just like, I don't know. Maybe she do got it. I don't, I don't know, Chaz. So Tisha just feels like she's hurt because she has always looked at them more than like cousins but as sisters. Tisha says she thinks the reason why her family questions Marcel is because they think that she doesn't go in on him and they feel like they're saying um, the things she's basically afraid to say. And I just, again, boundaries. Has anybody heard of that word? They're doing entirely too much and they are way too involved in your marriage. And Marceau was right when he said that people, when you're getting married, people tell you to keep folks out your marriage. And then when you're married, people try to infiltrate your marriage. And um, I just feel like that's not your cousin's place to say anything. Wanda is already, baby, Wanda don't need no help. Wanda don't need no help. She's fire all about herself, okay? So, um... Tisha tells Marceau that she would like him to give her serious, concise, direct answers when she's asking him questions. And the look on his face made me feel like he was going to say something out the way, but he didn't. Instead, he says, well, okay, well, can you choose, you know, um, the questions that you bring to me? In other words, he wants her to choose her battles and not just bring him stupid stuff just because it's out there, i.e., when she asked him, did he go take the wine to Melody's house personally? 
So Melody and Kimmy meet up in the next scene, and I could not care less about this scene either. Um, and I see, maybe I just didn't pay attention to, to it before, but Melody is now going by Melody Cherie in the caption. And I'm just always going to remember you as whole. You've been whole for, to us for four years. I don't know. So Kimmy says that she appreciates Mel going to check on Destiny as a friend. And um, she asked, does she think that they can get themselves back together after Mel, you know, checked on her as a friend? And Melody does this pageant smile and stare, and it was just so annoying. Melody can get so condescending when she wants to. Um, and she goes around, gives us this roundabout answer about just because we aren't friends, you're not friends with somebody doesn't mean you wish them bad. Melody, Cherie, Rogers. Holt Rogers again. That is not what she asked you. She did not ask you, did you want to see her do well? She did not ask you, do you wish her well? What she asked you was, uh, do you see yourself becoming friends for her again? Since you checked on the girl, you still have a soft spot in your heart for her. That is what she asked. You're acting like Marceau with these roundabout answers. Girl, just say no if the answer is no. Uh, Melody is if she's not a mean girl in real life, she plays one on she on TV. I'm sorry, she gives me mean girl vibes. Um, she likes to control the narrative. Um, I think she gets off on being able to hold the forgiveness card. Um, and I just, I don't know. I don't know. Um, next, we see Martel and the guys loading the van for the Atlanta trip. And he asked the guys, what are your, guy, what are your wives saying about the trip today? And Kimmy says to uh, Maurice, have fun. I'm going to enjoy my staycation, a.k.a. I'm going to enjoy having a good time without you and your son, Monster. Um, Tiffany says, Tiffany, I don't remember what Louis said. Tiffany said, long story short, Tiffany really don't give a darn about Louis going out to have fun for the weekend or however they, long they're going to be gone because Tiffany don't like Louis. She doesn't. She doesn't like Lewis. Um, Tisha says to Marceau, live your best life, YOLO. I need to see that on, on camera because I don't believe that's what she said. I, I don't. I don't. Anyway, Martel, Martel tells them, you guys can live vicariously through me because I'm about to show out. And Maurice um, basically, and I'm confused because Marcel, Mar, uh, Martel is saying all this, I'm single, I'm single, I'm single. But you ain't hadn't gotten back with Arian at this time. I'm confusion. She be doing interviews and stuff, like, and going on live every day. So I thought y'all was just together because her only claim to fame is being Martel Holt's mistress. So if y'all not together, girl, why you keep trying to sneak out the barn? Okay. So, we see Mar Maurice says that they're going to have fun, unlike Marceau, because he's going to be well-behaved. And Marceau responds by saying, I hope your fun doesn't include adultery. And the guys are cracking up. This is what I be talking about. Like, bruh, this is why Marceau won't answer the question. Seriously, these people are having fun with us. Marceau is a producer. Marceau is helping to produce the show, and y'all can't tell me no different. Um, Carlos can get his man an executive producer credit because he is getting it started. It is not funny to talk about adultery, especially when you are in the presence of an adulterer and you are, um, you know, uh, you are rumored to be an adulterer yourself. And they talk about we're gonna have a whole bunch of linebackers around. I, Men are just, they don't care. They don't. And the more I watch these shows, the more I know that they don't care. Dear future husband, if you are watching this, don't play with me the way Marceau and Maurice are playing with their wives. They, um, the reason why Maurice couldn't really check Marceau about the picture is because Maurice and Marceau are the same person. Maurice is just packaged a little bit better. That's all, y'all. That's it. I ain't got no more. Make sure y'all tune in to my next video. Thank y'all for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And I'll see y'all for the next one. Bye.